Hello and welcome, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Giuseppe Roseno, a professor of cardiology and consultant cardiologist at St. George's Hospital NHS Trust University of London and the president of the European Society of Cardiology Heart Failure Association. Get ready to learn from one of the best in the field of cardiology. In this video, proudly brought to you by the P2PMD network, Dr. Roseno will be sharing his expert insights on heart failure. In the succeeding presentation titled, An Innovative Way to Treat HF, Emphasis on Cardiac Metabolism, Dr. Roseno will delve into the captivating world of cardiac metabolism and explore how targeting certain aspects of it can help treat heart failure. Dear colleagues, it's a very pleasure for me to be here with you today and uh, discuss the importance of metabolic torch to heart failure and the role of metabolic modulators. Now, we know that uh, at rest in cardiac metabolism, the pro energy production comes preferentially from um, uh, free fatty acids, and uh, only part of it comes from uh, glucose, despite the fact that glucose is more efficient in uh, producing uh, energy compared to uh, free fatty acids. Indeed, as soon as we switch from uh, resting state into an increased metabolic demands that can be an increase in the heart rate or increase in blood, in blood pressure or increase in exercise capacity, we see that there is immediately a switch from uh, free fatty acids to glucose uh, utilization. And this is because uh, the, the heart needs more energy and uh, uh, the, these, more, uh, these increased energies are met by the greater utilization of glucose. Um, this, uh, metabol the, this uh, um, pathophysiology, uh, pathophysiology is important in order to understand the metabolic changes and uh, the effect of the metabolic changes in patients with heart failure. And indeed, when we look at the heart of patients with heart failure, we see that as an impaired uh, capacity for glucose uptake and glycolysis, a decrease in uh, carbohydrate oxidation, and an increase in free fatty acids. Therefore, the, uh, in the heart of patients with heart failure is less efficient as, uh, in terms of energy production than a normal heart. And uh, also, the uh, redu reduction in glucose or uptake reduces uh, the cell storage, and uh, the use of glucose and, uh, that does not enter into the um, uh, Krebs cycle leads to, leads to uh, cell acidosis. Now you can see the difference in uh, um, uh, the, the metabolic changes make in uh, between the normal myocardium and the failing myocardium. This is a, uh, is a normal myocardial cell where you can see that all the mitochondria are very well aligned with the sarcomeres. Whilst in the failing, myocardi failing myocardium, you can see that uh, the, my, um, the uh, mitochondria are small and uh, uh, rounded, and uh, the crystals uh, are uh, all swollen. So basically, this uh, tells us that that is a, an, um, uh, um, a, a, a completely uh, deranged uh, metabolism, and there is an, a significant alteration of energy production. So the leading, the metabolic changes that occur in heart failure uh, uh, from uh, uh, lead to an, a decrease in ATP production, but not just a decrease in ATP production that is important for the actomyosin interactions, but also a decrease in the ATP reserve. And the ATP reserve is important in order to um, uh, interact uh, and uh, uh, and uh, reuptake calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and there uh, and also there is less ATP available for the um, uh, actomyosin interaction. That leads to a subclinical impairment of system. The, um, also, the decrease of uptake of, uh, uh, of ATP reserve leads to less of calcium sarcoplasmic uptake that uh, also makes the heart stiffer and therefore induces a subclinical impairment of diastole. Now, when we have <clears throat> at rest, the heart may compensate with a, a lesser energy production. But when we have, say, for example, an increase in blood pressure, chronic perfusion or ischemia, if they act, in, uh, act on a normal 
patient heart with normal lab ventricular function, the uh, in, impaired calcium sarcoplasmic uptake induces an increase in uh, diastolic stiffness and therefore heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Whilst the, uh, when they act on a, a myocardium that is uh, a, has already lost part of its uh, energy con, um, contractility force, that, that uh, uh, condition like, uh, conditions like chronic hyperperfusion, ischemia, but also increasing heart rate and blood pressure, they further worsen the, the, uh, heart, the uh, systolic heart failure. Now, uh, the importance of these uh, theoretical changes have, has been show, have been shown in vivo in humans, especially in patients with uh, diabetes. Patients with diabetes, we, we, we can see that there is a a significant and compared to non diabetes, they have a higher free fatty acids and higher glucose um, uh, in, in the plasma. But at the myocardium level, you see that uh, the glucose utilization is significantly decreased and uh, utilization of free fatty acid is significantly increased to, compared to non uh, diabetes. That also uh, translates into a less uh, reduced production of energy. And that has been shown to be uh, associated, can, that can be measured by the phosphocreatine ATT, ATP ratio. So patients with diabetes mellitus have um, a reduction in glucose um, uh, uptake, less utilization, and therefore less production of ATP compared to control. And uh, they also are associated with uh, an increased risk of uh, uh, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Now, studies on cardiac metabolism in heart failure have uh, confirmed the fact that heart failure patients tend to have a less carbohydrate oxidation, increased free fatty acid oxidation, and therefore less energetic production. But the fact that the uh, free fatty acids are, in, uh, the, uh, are less important in terms of energy production compared to glucose has been shown by this experiment. Just uh, uh, focus on the top panels where um, that look at uh, that uh, look at cardiac work and cardiac efficiency. This is a, an isolated uh, uh, rat heart, in uh, the and uh, the uh, here, here there is an induction uh, an induction of ischemia through an uh, uh, left anterior descending ligation, and you can see that after the release of the uh, during the reperfusion phase. If the in the perfusate uh, in, uh, is made of uh, palmitate, you see that there is a little re uh, sorry free fatty acid, so there is a little uh, recovery of le of the left ventricular function. While whilst if there is in the perfusate there is glucose, there is a significant improvement of left ventricular mm -hmm. cardiac work and cardiac efficiency. That explains you and also confirms the importance of. Uh, uh, glucose oxidation compared to free fatty acid oxidation in the recovery of uh, left ventricular function. Now we know that we have di a different approach in heart failure. The, all the approaches that have uh, been shown to be effective uh, uh, are those that with uh, a decrease in oxygen energy and consumption, so reduction in uh, afterload, preload, and heart rate. But all studies that have increased the uh, contractility have also increased the oxygen consumption and therefore have demonstrated an increase in, uh, morta in mortality if that is associated with an increase in, uh, um, energy, product in energy utilization and an increase in, uh, in the sarcoplasmic calcium. So uh, another uh, possibility is to increase or to act on contractility is to increase the energy production with no changes in heart rate and blood pressure. So that may induce an increase in contractility without an increase in oxygen energy consumption. So if we look at uh, uh, the effect of some of the uh, cardiac drugs that uh, have a normodynamic action in patients with heart failure, we see that uh, beta blockers uh, if we look at the uh, in this specific study, where patients were studied with uh, um, uh, fluorodeoxyglucose with a PET scanning, you see that before 
the beta blockers, there was an increase in the utilization, uh, utilization of uh, free fatty acids. And after beta blocker, then there is a switch with an increase in the uh, utilization of glucose and less utilization of free fatty acids. The same uh, occurs with uh, alivabradin. You can see that uh, 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 in, in, in patients receiving uh, uh, ivabradin, there was a significant improvement in cardiac metabolism and uh, 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 measured by myocardial respiratory index compared to those who received uh, placebo. Now, we can act on the cardiac metabolism more specifically uh, using uh, cardiac uh, um, uh, uh, modulate, uh, modulators of cardiac metabolism. One way is to act with uh, an increase in uh, glucose uptake, like metformin and GLP-1 re uh, receptor agonist, or with uh, infusion of pyruvate. And uh, infusion of pyruvate into the coronary arteries has been shown to increase contractility. Another possibility is to use the CPT, uh, carnitine palmitoyl uh, transferase one, inhibitor and uh, or niacin, but these have not been shown to be effective. Then it is possible to act at the level of the acetylcoenzyme A with uh, dichloroacetate or with paroxylin. Paroxylin is, uh, not, uh, is the, only drug, uh, the, the only drug that has been used uh, uh, so far, but uh, um, before the advent of trimetazidine, but is uh, very toxic and is uh, licensed only in Canada, where basically is not used. The other possibility of um, acting on beta oxidation is with uh, uh, trim trimetazidine or ranolazine. The problem with ranolazine is that uh, it blocks the beta oxidation, but at very, very high dose that are never achieved in clinical practice. So up today, the only uh, agent that has a very important and sound effect on cardiac metabolism is uh, uh, trimetazidine. Other uh, uh, downstream, then we can have uh, we can act on cardiac metabolism once the uh, Krebs cycle is activated by giving essential amino acids or other drugs that we will see later. Now, metformin has. Um, uh, um, has been shown to be safe in patients with heart failure, although we don't have any single trial that looked at the effect uh, of metformin in uh, uh, patients with heart failure. Registry studies have shown that patients taking metformin have a better survival on those taking not metformin. Uh, on uh, the other hand, we have a very sound data and very strong data with trimetazidine. And you can see this study conducted by Gabriele Fragasso many years ago, where he looked at the uh, phosphorcating and ATP ratio, and uh, uh, if in patients with heart failure, and found that patients that received trimetazidine had uh, basically a normalization of the phosphocreatine in ATP ratio that was similar to that of, uh, and became similar to that of healthy subjects. Uh, our group was the first to demonstrate an effect of trimetazidine on left ventricular ejection fraction. This was in patient, diabetic patients with uh, heart failure. And we demonstrated that uh, trimetazidine compared to placebo had a significant effect in, the, in decreasing the left ventricular and endostolic uh, volume index, but also had uh, a significant uh, uh, improvement of wall uh, uh, motion score index, there, thereby suggesting that area of myocardium were hypokinetic became normokinetic and therefore having also an effect on hibernated myocardium and had a significant effect on left ventricular ejection fraction. This, uh, this data that we, have, uh, we and others have shown in patients with ischemic heart failure, diabetic heart failure, were also, uh, have also been confirmed by uh, other groups using uh, and the um, uh, uh, MRI uh, with uh, inpatients with dilated uh, cardiomyopathy. The uh, effect on left ventricular function were also mirrored in uh, uh, patients were on uh, uh, BNP levels, and uh, Gabriele Fragasso and others have shown that in, uh, uh, in a group of patients with heart failure, the, uh, uh, the use of placebo over six months led to a slight increase in BNP levels, while the use of trimetazidine significantly decreased the, the BNP 
levels. Now, we've looked at uh, all uh, at the group of uh, uh, patients that were included in different trials with heart failure. We put them together in uh, a multi-center study, and we, um, uh, in a study that was led by Gabriele Fragasso, and we uh, clearly demonstrated that trimetazidine was uh, effective in this group of uh, nearly 900 patients with uh, reducing um, uh, in, uh, overall mortality and cardiovascular mortality. Now, of course, that is uh, where data pulled together in, uh, uh, by different studies and uh, uh, meta-analysis of studies conducted with trimetazidine have demonstrated clearly a, a, a very a constant, constant effect on uh, left ventricular ejection fraction, improvement to left ventricular function, both in patients with ischemic heart failure and non-ischemic heart failure, and uh, also a significant improvement in, uh, um, uh, uh, in left ventricular ejection fraction also in patients with uh, dilated cardiomyopathy. Also, the use of trimetazidine was associated with a significant reduction in New York Heart Association class and an improvement in exercise duration. So the effect of, cardi uh, of uh, trimetazidine on cardiac metabolism is sound. It translates into an improvement in left ventricular ejection fraction in a, in a clinical effect on re reduction in New York Heart Association class and increase in exercise uh, duration. Putting together all uh, studies con uh, conducted so far, then uh, in a meta-analysis, uh, you can uh, see that uh, um, trimetazidine was eff uh, is effective in reducing uh, in uh, um, uh, overall mortality and uh, cardiovascular uh, mortality. Uh, which is a very important uh, ish, uh, effect. Now, another effect, another way of optimizing cardiac metabolism is that after the uh, energy is increased, then the electrons needs to be trans uh, um, uh, transported over the myocardial crystal. And uh, in the, um, uh, as I showed you earlier, how there's uh, the, the disease uh, mitochondria try, tend to have an abnormal Christi, and uh, this is, uh, abnormality is mostly given by a protein that is called cardiolip uh, cardiolipin that shapes uh, the myocardial st uh, structure. Uh, this uh, cardiolipin li is, um, uh, is altered in patients with uh, heart failure, and there is a very a small uh, molecule called Bendavia that can reestablish the healthy mitochondrial structure and function in, uh, um, uh, in the diseased myocardium. The long effect, uh, Bendavia has been studied in, uh, in dogs with heart failure, and uh, that has shown that the, uh, it may increase ATP synthesis and the ATP-ADP ratio, so increased production of energy. And in these animals, Bendavia was effective in uh, improving the level volume index, improving left ventricular ejection fraction, and uh, the wall mo motion score index. Now, therefore, if we want to look at the how to optimize myocardial activity, we can uh, increase the my myocardial uh, glucose uptake then with, an effect with metformin. The greater effect is induced by trimetazidine that acts on the glucose oxid oxidation and ba basically produces more energy. And this effect on energy production is uh, further enhanced if we also act, uh, add uh, uh, substances like bendavia and uh, iron. We know that iron deficiency is important, not just for the oxygen delivery, but also because they, uh, uh, iron is affecting transporting the electrons on the myocardial Christi that can induce an increased production of ATP. And uh, we know very well uh, that uh, uh, the uh, IV iron is effective in improving exercise capacity, decreasing uh, the fatigue score, and reduces the hospitalizations in patients with uh, heart failure. Just to end, there is a clear evidence to today that most of the beneficial effect of the SGLT2 in patients with heart failure were, uh, are related to an, uh, um, a metabolic effect of these drugs. And uh, as you can see, 
then uh, in uh, this study conducted with empagliflozin, before the uh, production or before empagliflozin, there was a reduced glucose oxidation and ketone oxidation and increase in uh, uh, free fatty acid oxidation. After the uh, empagliflozin, you can see that there is an increase in glucose oxidation, decrease in free fatty acid oxidation. So basically, it is uh, the same effect that we seek with trimetazidine, and therefore combining an SGLT2 inhibitor with uh, trimetazidine all further increases the glucose uh, uh, utilization and therefore production of ATP. Therefore, in uh, patients, with, patients with heart failure have metabolic disturbances that reduce the production of ATP, which causes a reduction in contractile reserve. Now, the modulation of cardiac metabolism improves myocardial ischemia, the left ventricular function, muscle strength, because that is not just an effect that we see at the heart level, but uh, also at the peripheral level, and also the prognosis in patients with uh, left ventricular dysfunction, secondary to, to coronary artery disease or diabetes or any forms of heart failure. The optimization of cardiac metabolism should be ideally obtained with inhibition of free fatty acid oxidation with uh, trimetazidine, but also with an improvement of insulin sensitivity and full fueling the Krebs cycles with amino acids and improving the myocardial electron transport with IV iron and uh, possibly when it will be available with Dendavi. So uh, at the present, the, 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 the uh, a sound uh, uh, effect on cardiac metabolism can be obtained with uh, the SGLT2 inhibitors and trimetazidine, and trimetazidine is the uh, in metabolic intervention that is the most effective in terms of uh, energy production. I will uh, uh, stop here and I'll be happy to take your questions. That concludes Dr. Rosano's expert sharing. We hope you had fun and gained new knowledge from watching the video. If you have questions or clarifications, feel free to type them in the comment section below or write us an email at p2pmd.net at gmail.com. Dr. Giuseppe Rosano will be more than happy to answer your queries. Thank you.